Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video we are going to be discussing a few problems from the section of electrostatics and uh, so we are going to be mainly dealing with uh, the problems that has to deal with you know scaling uh, which I'll be explaining in a bit what that actually means and then after discussing theory we are going to be solving some problems from the MCQ section and the build section so there are about like six to seven problems uh, overall in Pathfinder uh, regarding this topic and we are going to be covering them all in a span of two videos so with that let's begin with the video okay guys so first uh, you know we are going to discuss how scaling affects the potential and field of a particular charge distribution so so I'm going to begin by considering a charge distribution whose volume is dv and let's consider its volume charge density as rho so now let's say we want the potential due to this charge distribution at a point p which is at a distance of r from the charge so this uh, so that potential is going to be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught times the charge which is rho times dv divided by the distance okay so this is a very simple result okay guys so now the thing is what we are going to do is we are going to 2x every single dimension in the system so what I mean by that is, uh, so the volume of the cube, we can consider it as dx, dy, and dz, right? So I am doubling every single dimension of the system, which, okay, so the cube is about to look something like this. So, so if you consider the volume of the cube as d dx, dy, dz, then each linear dimension, that is dx, dy, and dz are gonna get doubled, which means the volume will scale by a factor of eight. So if I consider the volume of the initial cube as dv, now it is going to become 8 dv. So now as I said, I scaled up every single linear dimension. So now r will also increase and now r is going to be 2r. So now the question is, so as we scaled up everything, how is the potential going to change as a result of doing this? The answer to that is, okay, let's, let's call the new potential as vp prime. So this is again going to be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught times the charge. Now the charge is going to be 8 times the initial charge, so it is 8 times rho dv because the volume got scaled by 8 times, right? And divided by the distance, uh, and the distance has now become twice of r. So as you can see, this is basically 4 times of the initial potential vp. So as a result of doubling uh, all linear dimensions of a system, the potential due to a point charge or a, a small volume charge distribution dv actually scaled up by four times at a particular point. So this is basically um, the idea that we are going to be using in order to solve the problems and the rest of the theory we'll discover as we solve the problems. Now similarly the electric field due to the distribution uh, at a distance of r I can write it as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught rho dv divided by r squared. So now electric field is again a vector quantity but we are discussing about the magnitudes right now. So the magnitudes, as you can see, so the charge is going to increase by a factor of eight, but the denominator is R squared, so which is two squared, so four, so the electric field actually scaled up by a factor of two E naught. This is basically what scaling really means, and we are going to be utilizing these ideas in solving the problem. So with that, let's begin with the first problem of the day. Okay guys, so let's begin with our first problem. So in this question, the question is quite straightforward. We have a cube uh, in which each of the vertices ha is, is having a point charge of plus Q. And initially it's given to have a side length of A. And each of the charge experiences a net force of magnitude F. Okay, so now the thing is these charges are placed on the vertices of another cube of edge length B. So the thing is in this configuration, the force experienced by one charge on any one charge, let's pick up this charge. So the force will be along the body diagonal and this is given to be F in magnitude. Uh, so without changing the relative geometry, that is basically what we did is we made, we made the side length of the cube B. That's the only thing we changed. It's still a cube and still the charges are remaining same. Uh, we have to find what will the magnitude of the net force b in the second case so if i have to write the force on this uh, this plus q charge in one step it will be this so there are three charges that are at a distance of a from our plus q charge and then there are three charges that are at a distance of root 2a from our plus q charge and there is one charge that is at a distance of root 3a that is along the body diagonal so you can simply write this expression as some constant divided by a squared now my reason for writing this it this way is that in the second case, let's call the forces F prime, it will simply be C by B squared. So if you take the ratio, then F prime simply comes out to be A square F upon B squared. Okay, so now let's see how to solve this problem with scaling. So what we are essentially doing is we are scaling the linear dimensions of the system by a factor of B by A. So what does this mean? So if, so observe one length, one side length of the cube. If I multiply this with a factor of B by A, the new length becomes B because that's technically what we are doing. Right? Whereas the charges remain the same. 
So if the charges remain the same, we can say that the force scales as a factor of Q square by R square, which means a new force, let's call it F prime, becomes the original force divided by the new scaling factor squared. So it'll be B by A squared. And this way also you'll get the same answer as the option. So this was the first problem. If you didn't understand anything, it's fine. We'll solve a bit more problems and that'll make the idea clear. Okay guys, so this is the second problem of the day. So in this question, we have a cube who, which is made of an insulating material and it has a uniform charge distribution throughout its volume. So we have to consider the volume charge distribution rho in this case. Assuming electric potential due to this charged cube at infinite distances to be zero, potential at the center is found to be V0. What is the electric potential at one of its corners? Okay guys, so let's say this is our cube and let's mark the center as C and we have to find the potential at one of its corners. So let's call this point as P. Now Vc is given to be V0 and it's a volume charge distribution. So now the thing is we obviously cannot take up volume elements and integrate because, because that's gonna make it a, a very scary integral. So let's say this is a volume element, then you have to do integral rho dV upon R square and that's gonna be a scary integral. Value of a function at one configuration is given and they have asked value of the function in a different configuration and the relative configuration remains the same, just like in the previous problem, right? So let's see how we can solve this problem with the help of scaling. So guys, uh, we have to exploit this information over here. That is the center of the cube has a potential of V0. As we want the potential at the point P, we need to try to get the point P at the center of a cube. Because in that case, we can write VP in terms of V0 using our scaling principles. That we can easily do. So I'm gonna get rid of the points right now. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate this cube and I'm gonna place this on the side here and I'm gonna duplicate this entire thing and I'm gonna place it over here and I'm gonna duplicate this entire thing and I'm gonna place it over here. Now remember guys, our original point P was over here. P is our original point. Now, the good thing is now this P is actually at the center of this big cube that we just created with our imagination. Now we can use our scaling principle. So we actually went from right to left, right? So let's say the side length of our original cube was A. So the new side length, as you can see, is going to be A plus A, which is 2A. So it's as good as saying that we scaled all the linear dimension of our original system by a factor of two and hence we'll get this bigger cube, right? So, okay, so now let's see how the potential function scales. So the potential function, keeping the relative configuration same, once again, depends on how we scale the charge Q divided by how we scale the linear dimensions. So now what happened to the charge here? So as we go from right to left, guys, the total charge depends on the total volume, right? Because it's a volume charge distribution. So as we double the side length, the volume of this cube increases by a factor of eight which means the charge actually scaled up by a factor of eight times the initial charge. And the linear dimension, as I just said, we multiplied it with a factor of two, right? It went from A to 2A. So the linear dimensions actually scale up by a factor of two times the original. So actually the potential scaled up by a factor of four times the original potential. And this is what we uh, actually found out in the derivation, right? So the potential at point P, which is actually the center of the bigger cube, right? Is actually four times potential at the center due to the smaller sphere by our scaling argument. So is the answer four V naught? And the answer to that is it's not the final answer. And the reason for that is these seven additional cubes that we just added, uh, we added it with our imagination. It's not there exactly, right? But the good thing is the contribution due to each of these, you know, seven, each of these eight cubes is identical because point P is symmetrically located with respect to each of these cubes. So we can essentially say that the contributions due to each cube for the potential at the center is actually simply one by eight of the total. So basically what that means is that our potential at our point P is actually four V naught divided by eight, which is simply V naught by two, which would be our final answer. Okay, so that's the solution to this problem. Okay guys, so moving on to this next problem. So this is the build your understanding problem number 18. So in this question, we have a cube that is shown in figure one with uniformly distributed charge in its center volume. So again, we have to consider volume charge distribution and the intensity of the electric field and potential at one of the vertex, just like the previous problems, they are given to be E naught and V naught. A portion of half the size, half edge length of the original cube is cut and removed. So basically this small cube over here, whose edge length is A by two is chopped uh, from this big cube and as a result we now have to determine the potential and the electric field at point P. 
Okay guys, so now let's just uh, speed run these problems. Okay, so let's just start with the potential because that's easiest to understand, right? So the potential here due to this, due to this cube of side length A is given to be V0. Now guys, this uh, point P is at the vertex of this cube, right? And similarly, even if you consider this removed cube, assume it's there for a second, this point P is the corner of that cube as well, right? So now we can use scaling for this removed cube in order to determine the potential at the point P, right? Because it's exactly similar to this. So again, so what is this? So this is simply a cube whose linear dimensions are multiplied by one half as compared to the original cube, right? So the potential again, it scales. Now I'm not, I'm gonna directly write it. So as when we doubled uh, the linear dimension, the potential became four times, right? So when we half it, the potential becomes one fourth. So due to the bigger cube, it was V naught. So due to the cube of A by two, the potential contribution is going to be V naught by four. And I think it is pretty easy to no? understand. So now finally, what is a potential point P? It is the potential due to the entire cube at that point P, which is V naught. And we need to subtract the potential due to the small cube, which we just determined as V naught by four. So the answer comes out to be three V naught divided by four. Okay, so uh, now let's talk about the analysis of the electric field. So electric field, I mean, the only difference is that first of all, the scaling factor is gonna differ by a bit. And the second factor is that it's a vector quantity, right? So we have to ensure that the directions match. Okay, but uh, the analysis is uh, going to be pretty similar. The electric field intensity vary, you know, scales, how we scale Q divided by how we scale the linear dimension, but the square of it. So that's the uh, only difference, right? So it's given that the electric field at point P is E0 due to the big cube. And by symmetry, we can see that the direction of E0 will be along the body diagonal, right? So, okay guys, so now I want you guys to forget about everything and just imagine that this cube was actually present here. Let's say the electric field due to that cube, again, it will be by symmetry along its body diagonal. Let's say its magnitude is E prime. Now E prime, we can simply determine by scaling. So it is going to be the original electric field. Okay guys, so now what is happening to the charge again? Uh, so the initial lengths of the bigger cube was A, right? And now we halved it, which means the volume becomes one by eight, which means the charge becomes one by eight. Scaling factor for the charge is one by eight divided by, now what happens to the linear position? So that is getting halved, right? So that will be one by two, squared and as you can see the electric field has a magnitude of E0 by 2 due to this small cube of side length A by 2. So by superposition we can say that because of the big cube it is going to be E0 along the body diagonal and because of the removed cube you have to actually subtract it right. So, th so this contribution is going to be E0 by 2 but in the opposite direction. So the final contribution is going to be E0 by 2 along the body diagonal of the cube. So that was the solution to this problem. So that will be E0 by two and three V0 by four. Okay, so now let's move on to the next problem. So this problem will be the last problem of the day guys. And after this, there are a few more problems left and I'll come with another video for that. And those problems are pretty good as well. So let's begin. So we have a right pyramid who's, uh, which has a square base and height h. Again, it has a uniform volume charge distribution and the magnitude of electric field and potential is given now at the apex, okay? And now we chopped uh, off the pyramid at a height of h and it has been removed. Find the modulus of the electric field and the potential at the apex p of this truncated pyramid. Okay guys, so again, first, clearly we can observe that this is a problem of scaling. The only difference is that this problem requires of us a little bit more geometry. That's the only difference. Okay guys, so we have a big pyramid here whose height is capital H. And we have our small pyramid over here whose height is small h. So what we're trying to figure out with the help of geometry is that what factor should I multiply to the linear dimension so I can transform this big pyramid of height h into the small pyramid of height small h. Okay, so there is a, and there is a result in geometry and we don't really need the exact result. That is basically if we have a pyramid whose uh, base area is a, then its volume we can simply write as one by three base area times height. Okay, so now I'm gonna make an argument. Let's say I say that this is our pyramid and if I drop a perpendicular uh, to the base of our pyramid, if I want diagonal of the base, which is a square, right? And let's say this angle over here is theta. So we know this length is h. So I can say that this uh, distance over here is simply h tan theta. My The point I'm trying to make is that I can simply claim that the volume of this is some constant times h cube. Now, there is going to be some tan theta term, some trigonometric terms, but that is going to be the same for either of them, 
right? Because the only thing that we are doing is changing the length. That is basically the dimensions. So I can similarly say that the volume of this, let's call it B prime of the smaller pyramid is going to be C times small h cubed. So this is going to be the logic that we are going to be using here. So, so basically if I want to go from left to right, all I have to do is scale the linear dimensions by a factor of small h by capital H. Okay, so that's all I'm doing. Now let's move on to the problem. Okay guys, so now the pyramid on the left has a height of h, pyramid on the right has a height of small h. The, according to the claim that I made, the volume is actually proportional to h cube, right? So let's say if I say the volume of the left guy is V naught and let's say we want the volume of the right guy, then we have to use scaling, right? So we'll multiply V naught by a factor of small h by capital H cubed, right? Using our previous analogy. I mean, this is exactly what we did for cubes as well, right? So, so why are we even doing any of this? And that is to determine its charge. So the charge, we know it is going to depend on the volume because it's a volume charge distribution, right? So let's say the charge of the left guy is Q naught. Similarly, the volume of the charge on the right guy is going to be Q naught, small h by capital H cubed. Linear dimension, as I said uh, earlier, this is just varying by a factor of small h by capital H. If I want to go from the left guy to the right guy, all I have to do is scale the original dimension by a factor of small h by capital H. So now let's determine the potential at the apex. So let's call the apex point as A and let's call the apex point of the smaller guy as A. The for the of the bigger guy, it's actually given, right? It's actually V naught. I'm going to get rid of the volume now because it's similar to that, right? So I'm going to get rid of it. We only need the charge, right? Now what is going to be this guy's potential. So let's call it V prime. So the new potential that is V prime is going to be the original potential times the scaling factor for the charge, which is essentially the scaling factor for the volume. And that was small h by capital H cubed divided by the scaling factor of the linear dimensions. And that was small h by capital H. So this essentially becomes V naught times small h by capital H squared. So the potential due to the small guy is simply V naught small h by capital H squared. And guys, the electric field uh, scaling factor also we can write it in one step. It will be E naught times H by capital H cubed because charge comes on the numerator. But the only difference is that we have to divide by the dimension scaling factor squared. So the electric field uh, varies linearly with uh, the dimensions. So that is basically if we make the height of the pyramid half, the electric field would become halved. But the potential varies as one fourth. Anyway, so now, now it's fairly simple. So V at P is the difference of the contributions due to this big guy and the small guy. So due to the big guy, it's V naught. And due to the small guy, it's V naught times small h upon capital H squared. And for electric field at point P, it will be the contribution due to the small, bigger guy, bigger guy minus the contribution due to the smaller guy. So this comes out to be E naught times one minus small h by capital H. So this would be the answer. This would be the two answers that we are trying to find. So that was it for this video, guys. Uh, so I'll bring more problems in the future. Uh, so in the next video, we'll cover almost all the cases that is that are in Pathfinder you know, regarding scaling from the chapter of electrostatics. So that was it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can comment down below. And that's it. Thanks for watching.